Hey guys, Vincent here, and these are my bayonets. Welcome back guys to the third and last part of my collection series and I would say let's just get started. So these are mainly sword bayonets because I do not collect socket bayonets but I do have one so I can show it to you. Um, this one here is the bayonet for the Prussian musket 1809-12 and this came with a musket that I bought and therefore I will keep it. Um, nothing too special here, just a regular so socket bayonet. Um, maybe one interesting part is that um, mostly Austrians and Prussians used this spring locking mechanism while Great Britain and um, especially France used the locking mechanism with the turning ring. So the first sword bayonet here is the Fusilier Bayonet 1860 and it has a nice broad blade with a pipeback construction. Looks pretty much like the uh, British 1855 pattern and I think this is a copy of the Prussians copied the design. This one here is what was originally another 1860 model but was then uh, in the early 1870s, adopted to use the Jägerbüchse 1871. So they pushed out the muzzle ring diameter from around 22 millimeters for the uh, dry needle guns to now 17.4 millimeters. The next three bayonets are my Hirschfängers or the Jäger bayonets. And here is the same story, they use them with the dry needle guns. And when the Jägerbüchse 1871 came around, they adopted them to be used with a smaller muzzle of the 1871. This one here is shortened. I don't know why. Um, yeah. The next two bayonets are the Infantry Bayonet 1871 for the Mauser Rifle 1871. One with the original brass mounted scabbard, the other one with the Ersatz scabbard produced during the First World War. The next four bayonets here are the small 1871 or 71-84 type and we have one example from Bavaria, one from Saxony, one from Württemberg and one from the Imperial Navy. The next bayonets are a bunch of bayonets 98 to go alongside the rifle 98, the Mauser 98 rifle. And Nearly all of them are marked to the Imperial Navy or Colonial Forces. Nothing too special here, they were not very liked. They were very thin blades, they bent easily, they cracked easily and overall not a very great design. Next two are the short bayonet 98. They would always come with a sawback, with just the way they built. The earlier version with the leather grips and the three rivets and the later version with the two wooden grip pieces and two screws. And pretty interesting to see how the handle of the KS-98 with the leather looks like the Hirschfänger with these um, bird heads and this peak in the back of the pommel. The next bayonet here is a, another short bayonet for the Rifle 98. This would be called the 84-98 um, first pattern or old pattern and this was a um, design to be this was designed to be cheaper and more cost effective than the KS98 and they were using the scabbard and the blade from the before mentioned 7184. Now the next bayonets are the pioneer bayonets. First we have the 9802 this really hefty and big blade the sawback this was only in service for three years, from 1902 until 1905, and then was replaced by the 9805, um, because it was still um, useful enough, but um, a bit lighter and a bit handier. So for the first three years, the 9805 was always produced with a saw, 
And then in around um, 1908, 1909, they start producing versions without a sole. So these are those. Um, this one here is uh, Mark II, the artillery, telegraph units, and this one here is a Navy marked. The next bayonet is pretty interesting to me because it is an artillery bayonet 7198. And even though this is in kind of bad shape, you will still know why I find this interesting because if you look at the blade, you will think, hey, haven't I seen that before? And yes, you do have. This is the blade of the Fusilier Seitengewehr 1860 or the artillery Seitengewehr artillery bayonet 71. And this is just the blade from those two bayonets mounted on a 98 style handle. This was done in 1913, so when the foot artillery were equipped with the new 98 rifle, they could still use their trusted really big bonnet blades. And for the last part we have my two First World War bonnets, the 9805 New Pattern and the 8498 New Pattern both with the typical steel scabbard and the flash guard, so these bonnets could be used with a carbine 98 or without the, um, the muzzle breaking the wood grip pieces. Alright guys, this is it. This was the last video from my collection. I hope you enjoyed them. If you have any questions or anything else, just comment under the video. I'll be sure to read those. And this leaves me with nothing else to say but I will see you guys in the next video.